morning ladies and gentlemen i hope you are all doing fine despite the pandemic my brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh you may have already known i am attorney saidamin mamlik barat i am from sultan naga di maporo lanao del norte and currently i am residing at la la lanao del norte so i am friends with our very own amicus attorney j and amicus mam mari who gave you the rationalization of your board exam trial on criminal jurisprudence procedure and evidence so ayong umaga pag-usapan po natin ang tungkol sa revised rules on evidence but before i start i would like to thank amicus attorney j for giving me this opportunity to be part of your journey in achieving your dream of becoming registered criminologist. I will try my best to give you as much as I could in this lecture for you to have at least an overview of the entire rules on evidence. But given the limited time that we have, please also know that I will be making emphasis only on points or on matters or topics that I believe would come out in the board exam. So without further ado, let us start. Our sources of the rules on evidence may be classified into either principal or secondary. So what are our principal sources of the rules on evidence? Number one, we have the rules 128 to 133 of the revised rules of court. And then administrative matter number 19-08-15-SC which introduced amendments to, the, uh, to these old rules and which took effect on May 1, 2020. The secondary sources include Philippine, the Philippine Constitution, particularly its provisions on the Bill of Rights and the article or provisions on the Supreme Court. We also have special laws which were, uh, which were passed by the Congress that either create, amend, or supplement existing rules on evidence. Examples of these special laws are the Electronic Evidence Act and the Child Witness Law. Lastly, we have the decisions of the Supreme Court. Accordingly, evidence is the means sanctioned by these rules of ascertaining in a judicial proceeding the truth respecting a matter of fact. So what does that mean? Ibig sabihin daw po, ang evidence ay, ay isang paraan na pinahihintulutan ng mga panuntunan upang alamin sa isang paghukom o paglilipis ang katotohanan patungkol sa isang bagay. Now, I, now I want you to take note of these uh, highlighted words and phrases because later on, we will uh, explain further this definition and we will also try to distinguish evidence from proof. Okay, so evidence may be understood in either of these two senses. Number one, that it refers to the very materials presented in court consisting of objects, documents, or oral narration of witnesses. Actually, this uh, concept of evidence relates to our layman understanding of the term. Diba pag sinabi natin evidence, ang unang pumapasok sa ating mga isipan ay yung mga bagay na prinipresenta sa court, for example, ng prosecution or ng defense to advance their cause or case. And number two, we also refer to evidence as a system, process, or methodology of proving a fact. This concept of evidence is actually what is expressed in the section one on the definition of the Term. So it is a system, ito isang sistema, proseso, or pamamaraan upang patunayan ang isang bagay. Now we have come to the highlighted phrases in the definition. Number one, means sanctioned by these rules. Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? It means that the procedure in ascertaining the truth of a matter of fact is provided by the rules on evidence. Number two, of ascertaining in a judicial proceeding, it means that the rules on evidence are applicable only to controversies which are decided upon by 
regular courts of law. So, ano nga ba yung regular, uh, regular courts of law na yan? Ito yung MTCs, RTCs, and they do not include quasi-judicial bodies or administrative agencies. Although, these quasi-judicial bodies or administrative agencies are not precluded from adapting the rules. And then, we have number three, the truth. Accordingly, the objective of the rules on evidence is to render justice in ascertaining the truth. And this truth could either be factual or moral or judicial truth. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng factual or moral truth? So, factual or moral truth refers to the truth which the courts seek to know. And then judicial truth pertains to the truth which have been proven or which has been proven in court uh, by means of the evidence presented. It is said that the ideal or perfect justice is, is when the factual or moral truth also becomes the judicial truth. Example, so merong murder case, then there is an information that has already been filed in court. In the said information, it is alleged that A killed B by the use of knife. Ang factual truth or moral truth na gusto manal- ma- malaman ng korte is kung totoo nga ba na pinatay ni A si B. Now, uh, in the trial of the case, the prosecution would most probably present the knife as uh, as an object evidence to prove that there is indeed killing. If the prosecution is able to do that and then later on the judge finds the accused guilty of the crime charge, then uh, in that case there is ideal or perfect justice because the factual truth becomes the judicial truth. So yung katotohanan na gustong malaman ng court kung talagang si A ang pumatay kay B ay naging judicial truth siya, truth siya in the sense na the prosecution was able to prove it by the use of the means presented, uh, by the use of the evidence presented, which is the knife. Then number four, respecting a matter of fact. It only means that the rules on evidence apply only to controversies which are susceptible or which are uh, capable of being ascertained in a judicial proceedings. So, hindi daw po sakop ng rules on evidence yung controversies involving uh, religion, individual beliefs, or politics. Uh, okay, so earlier, I said that we will distinguish evidence from proof. Ano nga ba yung kaibahan nila? Actually, in layman's point of view, parang wala eh. Kasi pag sinabi natin evidence or proof, they all refer to one and the same thing. Katibayan. But then, in legal point of view, while evidence is the means, proof pertains to the result or the effect of evidence. And the example previously given, ang evidence doon ay yung knife na prinisinta ng prosecution while the proof is the finding of the court that A is indeed the killer of B. You also have these concepts of factum probandum and factum probans. Ano nga yung factum probandum? Accordingly, it refers to the ultimate fact to be proven or the proposition to be established. On the other hand, factum probans refer to the evidentiary facts by which the factum probandum will be proved. Example, si X may utang kay Y. Ngayon, si Y Sinisingil niya si X. Ano nga ba yung ultimate fact na kailangan i-establish ni Y? So, kailangan niyang establish na merong pagkakautang. So, yun yung factum probandum. The ultimate fact to be established or the proposition to be established is the existence of, existence of death. And then, saan doon yung factum probans? For example, uh, during the uh, okay yung uh, ang factum probans doon ay eh, for example merong kontrata between the two of them the evidentiary facts by which the factum probandum will be proved 
is the existence of that contract. So, kailangan mapatunayan na merong kontrata between them. Uh, okay, so now we come to the classification of evidence. Number one, we have direct versus circumstantial. Direct evidence is that which proves the fact in issue dispute without the aid of any inference or presumption it is evidence to the precise point. Ano ang ibig sabihin niyan? Ito ay ebidensya na kapag nakita mo or narinig mo in the case of testimonial evidence, eh hindi ka na mag, uh, magdadalawang isip or magdududa na talagang yung bagay na gustong patunayan ng ebidensya na yon ay totoo. So, uh, in the example given, yung murder case between A and B, anong to A, meron palang eyewitness at yung si C. So, yung magiging testimony ni C, yun ay isang direct evidence because it uh, it points directly to the fact of healing. Also, we have circumstantial evidence. Accordingly, this refers to proof of facts or facts from which taken singly or collectively, the existence of the particular fact in issue may be inferred or presume as a necessary or probable consequence. Actually, itong circumstantial evidence na ito, lumalabas lang siya pag walang direct evidence. So, halimbawa, walang eyewitness to the killing of A and... Uh, to the killing of E. Halimbawa, walang eyewitness. Wa, wala, uh, hindi nakita ni C yung nangyari between A and B. Tapos, hindi mahanap ng prosecution yung kutsilyo na sinasabing ginamit ni A para patayin si B. In that case, the prosecution may find it hard to convict A but it is not without alternatives. Actually, it can still obtain a conviction kung meron, uh, merong circumstantial evidence ang prosecution. Halimbawa, kung, kung uh, hindi man nakita sa scene of the crime yung Cotillo, but then uh, merong uh, naiwan doon na baril. And then, upon uh, verification, yung baril na yung baril na yun, nakaregister pala kay A. Tapos, meron ding witnesses who will testify that prior to the incident, eh, nagkasuntukan naman pala itong si A and B. In that case, the prosecution may use the fact that the register uh, may use the fact that the firearm recovered from the scene uh, from the scene of the crime is registered in the name of A and also the testimony of witnesses who have seen A and B fighting prior to the incident or prior to uh, the killing of A I mean prior to the killing of B by A so yun, in that uh, instance the existence of the particular act in issue which is the fact of killing may be inferred or presumed as a necessary or prob uh, probable consequence by the presentation of the prosecution of those evidence. Yung uh, barrel that upon verified, uh, upon verification was uh, discovered to be the, registered in the name of A and the testimony of uh, and, the, uh, and the testimony of the witnesses who have seen A and B fighting prior to the incident. Actually, this uh, circumstantial evidence is also governed by rules. So, you cannot just, uh, as the prosecution, as the prosecutor, you cannot just take any circumstances to prove uh, to, uh, to prove your case. Meron ding rules na sinusunod dito, but later we will know those rules. The number two, we have positive versus negative evidence. Positive evidence is that, is that which affirms 
the occurrence of an event or existence of a fact, as when a witness declares that there was no fight which took place. Negative evidence, on the other hand, is that which denies the occurrence of an event or existence of a fact, as when the accused presents witnesses who testify that the accused was at their party when the crime was committed. So, example nito ay yung denials and alibi. It is said that denials and alibi are weakest forms of defenses. Number three, we have primary versus secondary. So, primary or best evidence is that which the law regards as affording the greatest certainty of the fact in question. Well, secondary evidence is that which is necessarily inferior and shows on its face that a better evidence exists. Ano example ng primary evidence? Yung sinasabi natin kanina, yung si X and Y, tapos sinisingil ni X to Y. Ang primary or best evidence for X to present in that case ay yung contract between the two of them. That is, the law between the two of them. And the secondary evidence, eh, for example, kung, uh, kung nawala ni X yung original contract, tapos meron siyang na-secure na photocopy, that photocopy of the contract is considered evidence. Uh, is considered secondary evidence. It is necessarily inferior kasi it is a mere photocopy. Then we have conclusive versus prima facie. Conclusive evidence may either be that which the law does not allow to be contradicted, example judicial admissions, or that the effect of which overwhelms any evidence to the contrary. Example dito is yung DNA profile ng tatay at ng kanyang anak versus yung, yung contrary evidence is yung denial ng tatay na hindi anak. So, as between the two, it is the DNA profile which prevails. And in that case, it is a conclusive evidence of filiation or paternity. Number two, uh, I mean, prima facie evidence is that which standing alone or uncontradicted is sufficient to maintain the proposition affirmed. In the eyes of the law, it is sufficient to establish a fact until it has been proved, rebutted, contradicted, or overcome by contrary proof. So, yung primary, eh, prima, uh, prima facie evidence refers to yung mga disputable presumptions. Meron tayong tinatawag na disputable presumptions. Later, maybe uh, we will have a time para i-discuss yung lahat. Or maybe some of them. Okay, so, cumulative versus corroborative evidence. Cumulative evidence is additional evidence of the same kind bearing on the same point. On the other hand, corroborative evidence is additional evidence of a different kind or character but tending to prove the same point. It is evidence which confirms or support. The previous example given, cumulative evidence doon, eh, alibawa, hindi lang pala si C, yung eyewitness, andyan din pala si D, this testimony will be cumulative evidence. Corroborative evidence, alimbawa, uh, yung example between X and Y, Aside from the contract which X uh, will present to prove that there is existence of death, meron palang witness nung nag-transact sila, nung nangutang si Y, andyan pala si Z, then Z's testimony as to the fact of the existence of death is a corroborative evidence that tends to prove the same point. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na exculpatory versus inculpatory evidence. Exculpatory evidence refer to that evidence which will excuse a person from an alleged fault or crime 
then inculpatory is that evidence which has the tendency to implicate or incriminate a person. In understanding these terms, uh, specifically this uh, exculpatory evidence, we might want to review our rules on the justifying or exempting, exempting circumstances. As those circumstances, if you if you prove them, if you are if you are the accused in the case, then the tendency is that you may be excused from the criminal obligation or criminal liability that is attached to the crime or crimes that have been charged against you. And inculpatory evidence naman, uh, sa madaling salita, ito yung halimbawa, uh, akusado ka sa isang case, and then, uh, inahabol ka ng mga police, tapos, pag nahuli ka nila, tinanong ka nila, yung mga sasabihin mo has the tendency to incriminate you. So, meron tayong specific rules uh, specific rules chat uh, it depends whether or not you are forced or by uh, it depends whether or not you have been subjected to force or intimidation violence para sabihin mo yung mga sinabi mo so for example if wala namang violence we will uh, learn later on that that could be a valid extrajudicial confession Especially if it is, uh, so for example, if you are not subjected to any form of violence or force or intimidation, then we will, uh, we will learn later on that that could be a valid uh, extrajudicial confession which has the tendency to incriminate you. And we also have object, documentary, and testimonial evidence. So, hindi na natin to i-discuss sa maigi kasi merong specific rules in the rules of evidence that pertain to them. Also, this relevant material and competent evidence, meron din silang specific rules. Now, these are other classifications of evidence. We have expert evidence, the testimony of one possessing in regard to a particular subject or department of human activity, knowledge, which is not usually acquired by other person. For example, in an annulment case, the expert evidence doon is the testimony ng psychologist or psychiatrist. Electronic evidence that is understandable. Forgotten evidence, so it is the evidence which was not presented in court because of oversight or forgetfulness of a party or council. Evidence alien the or extraneous, extraneous, extraneous evidence and evidence from outside or another source. So we will learn about this later as we discuss the parole evidence rule. Self-serving evidence, one made by the party to favor his own interest. It is one made by a party out of court. So, understandable. Opinion evidence, evidence given by an ordinary person regarding what he thinks. And then rebuttal evidence, evidence that will contradict other party evidence. So, for example, yung sinasabi natin kanina na, uh, case between X and Y. And ang, ang posibleng maging rebuttal evidence niya is a receipt showing that he has paid his entire in indebtedness to X. So that is a rebuttal evidence. Okay? So we are now on section 2, scope. Accordingly, the rules on evidence shall be the same in all courts and in all trials and hearings as otherwise provided by law or these rules. Okay, so evidence is admissible when it is relevant and it is not excluded by the Constitution, the law, or the rules of court. What do we mean when we say the evidence is relevant to the issue? In the example given, if instead of presenting the knife, the prosecution 
present D as a witness, but then in on the witness stand, ibang bagay yung mga pinagsasabi ni D, things or matters which are not related to the fact of healing, that testimony of D will be considered not relevant kasi hindi siya tumutukoy sa fact of healing of A and B. It is relevant if D discusses, for example, the, circo- uh, the specific circumstances which surrounded A's healing of B. So, what do we mean by the phrase not excluded? So, ibig sabihin, ang ebidensya daw po ay admissible or pwedeng pahintulutan ng korte kung hindi ipinagbabawal ng ating constitution, ng batas, o ng rules of court. Later, we will uh, explore this requirement of admissibility. We also have these kinds of admissibility of evidence. Number one, conditional admissibility. Ano yung example nito? For example, on trial, the prosecution will present C in the course of his direct examination of C Merong binabanggit si C na to the mind of A's defense are not in any way related to the fact of healing, which is the issue in point. And at that instance, A's defense counsel may raise an objection to that testimony, but the court seeing that the testimony might be relevant or might be shown to be relevant in a later stage of the trial may admit the testimonial evidence provided the prosecution will show the relevance of that statement in the late, uh, in the later part of his direct examination or in a later stage of the trial we also have curative admissibility it happens when an evidence which is normally not admissible is admitted by the court because similar inadmissible evidence has been introduced by the other party. So it has something to do with a waiver also on the part of the other party who has introduced similar evidence first to object to the admissibility of the evidence that is sought to be presented by the other. We also have multiple admissibility. It simply refers to the evidence which is not which is admissible not only for one purpose but for two or more purposes. Okay, plain view rule. Under this doctrine, unlawful objects within the plain view of an officer who has the right to be in the possession to have that view are subject to confiscation and are admissible in evidence. This is actually one of the exceptions to the general rule requiring a search warrant before a seizure of an unlawful object may be admitted in evidence. So, a common example of the application of the plain view rule is a case involving prosecution of the violation of RA 9165 or the anti-drugs or the law. Halimbawa, yung mga police, meron silang search warrant to conduct a search sa bahay ni D upang maghanap ng mga illegally possessed firearms. Pagpasok nila sa bahay, walang resistance, pinapasok sila ng maayos, tapos habang naghanap sila ng mga illegally 
or I mean illegally possessed firearms, meron silang nakita dun sa table na sachets of shabu and yung ibang sachets uh, pa na yun, merong mga white crystalline substance. Normally, yung sachets na yun are inadmissible kasi walang search warrant or hindi sila kasali dun sa uh, search warrant which the police officers are authorized to see. But under the plain view, since yung mga officers na yon or kung sino man yung specific na officer na nakakita ng sa shades na yon has the right to be there, has the right to have that view, kasi nga meron siyang search warrant, and hindi naman illegal yung uh, hindi naman illegal yung pagkakatayo niya sa loob ng bahay to have that view, those sa uh, shades of shabu are subject to confiscation and they may be presented in court to prove that aside from violating, for instance, the anti-illegal firearms law, Z is also a violator of the anti-illegal drugs law or anti-comprehensive drugs act or uh, anti-comprehensive drugs act exclusionary rule. A rule of evidence that excludes evidence obtained in violation of one's constitutional rights or obtained through illegal means such as those obtained by tortures and the law. Suppose that in the previously given example, yung mga sachets of shabu na yun, hindi nakita sa table, but instead, they were, uh, they were confiscated by the use of force or torture, the torture ng mga police ni D. Even if they know that ang pwede lang nilang i-confiscate legally ay kung ano lang yung nakalagay sa search warrant, in that case, yung mga illegally, uh, illegally possessed firearms, yung mga police, kinamitan nila ng force or dahas si Z, they forced him to, for example, produce evidence of shabu. Such evidence will not be admitted. So, ano ang halimbawa ng ebidensya na nakuha sa pamamagitan ng torture? The previously given example, if it turns out that the sachets of shabu were confiscated not under the operation of the plain view doctrine, but by the use of force, the nurture pala ng mga police si Z para magpalabas siya ng sachets of shabu under the exclusionary rule, those sachets of shabu will not be admitted. But instead, they will be excluded, excluded or even if offered by the prosecution, they will not be given any weight. Okay, so we also have this fruit of the poisonous tree. This actually related to the previous rule which we have discussed, the exclusionary rule. Under this uh, doctrine, once the primary source, which is the tree, is shown to have been obtained unlawfully, any deriv derivative evidence, which is the fruit derived from it, is likewise not admissible. Thus, evidence illegally obtained by the state should not be used to gain other evidence because the illegally obtained evidence stains all evidence subsequently obtained. In the previously given example, if it turns out that the search warrant which gave 
the right to the police officers to search the house of D was maliciously obtained, then the evidence or pieces of evidence such as the illegally possessed firearms which they may which they may seize by virtue of that search warrant may not be admitted in evidence. In that case, the primary source or the tree is the maliciously obtained search warrant and the fruit which is derived from it are those illegally possessed firearms. So kahit at that instance, malinaw na malinaw na talagang merong merong uh, illegally possessed firearms na nahanap sa bahay ni D, yung firearms na yon hindi pwedeng ipresent sa court to prove that Z is a violator of the anti-illegal possession of firearms act. We also have the silver platter rule. It is a doctrine that allows evidences by the state officers in an illegal search and seizure to be used against the accused in a criminal trial. So, ito yung kabaligtaran ng root of the poisonous tree doctrine and exclusionary rule doctrine. Section 4, Relevancy, Collateral Matters. Accordingly, evidence must have such a relation to the fact in issue as to induce belief in its existence or non-existence. I would not discuss this further as we have already talked about relevancy earlier. Evidence on collateral matters shall not be allowed except when it tends in any reasonable degree to establish the probability or improbability of the fact in issue. Collateral matters are facts and circumstances other than the facts in issue which are being offered in evidence as basis for inference as to the existence or non-existence of a fact in issue. So what are some examples of these collateral matters? We have number one, circumstance of flight. In the murder case between A and B, suppose that A was not arrested outright outright after he killed B. So, so tumakas siya from the place where he and his wife were currently staying, they transferred to another place sa lugar ng kanyang asawa. It may be, so ang pagtakas na yon may be offered in evidence by the prosecution as basis for inference as to the existence or not existence of a fact in issue. So in this uh, in that case yung pagpatay ni A kay B. So another example is an offer of compromise. So still in the previously given example suppose that A after killing B went directly to the house of B and offered B's wife 1 million pesos for the crime that he has committed. That collateral matter, the circumstances of A having offered B's wife 1 million pesos may be offered by the prosecution and evidence likewise as basis for inference as to the fact of killing. 